all started in the 1970s in the basement of a Wisconsin cobbler. Okay, so you enter the room, right? On the far wall is a dirty old treasure chest, but then off to the side, framed between these two huge, thick gold candlesticks, you can see metal inlaid writing on the wall, and in the glint of your torchlight, it reveals them to be dwarven silver. Mithril. I'm going to approach that chest. I'd like to inspect the inlaid wall, and I'll check out the candlesticks. These candlesticks are huge, man, like six feet tall and thick, like big around as your thigh, or maybe his thigh right there, because they're pretty damn thick. And atop of each of them sits a single fat candle, looking like it ain't ever been burned before. One is white, and the other is blue. And they're made of gold? Damn right. What about the wall? These inlaid mithril runes, man, they seem to spell out some sort of verse, or maybe even a riddle. Do you read it? Now I'm just going to start prying them out of the wall. And I'm going to start sawing these golden candlesticks into pieces so we can fit them in our packs. But the riddle, I spent all week writing that. Yeah, but we gain experience through gold and not nursery rhymes, so I'm sawing. I miss my kids recital right to you guys. Sounds like a personal problem to me. I'm going to open up that chest. What do I find? Yeah, let me check my notes here and, uh... Yeah, that's good. Okay, so as you reach for that chest, right, all of a sudden the lid just pops open, reveal itself to be a mouthful of big ass teeth, and it bites you in the wiener. It's got teeth? Yeah, man, yeah, it's all like. It's a monster? It looks like a chest? Nah, man, this thing ain't just a chest. It's like a chameleon. It can pose as anything it wants to be. It can be a chest or a door or a stinky old boot. All of a sudden, that candlestick you're holding, it just splits right up the middle to reveal a bunch of big ass teeth, and it's gonna bite you in the wiener. But my hobbit's a girl. She doesn't have a wiener. Yeah, Dweebles doesn't have a wiener. Ain't no problem at all, sister, because then a big pseudo pod comes stretching out of the side like a big ass gooey tongue, and it's gonna club you just. A what? A pseudopod. Do you mean pseudopod? Yeah, Dave calls them pseudopods. No one cares if Dave would call it, man. It's spelled pseudopod. And it's coming at you all greasy and oozy. Wackity, wackity, wackity. Like saliva? Yeah, but it's sticky like tar, man. So it wants to hold you close for a little bit of that kissy, kissy, then the munchy, munchy. Ay, 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 ay. What the hell are these things? I call them pseudo millions. Yeah, it's a pretty kick-ass name, don't you think? I don't know. I bet David called call them mimics or something. Ain't nobody care what David do, man. It's my game. I'm gonna bite you in the wiener for five points. <sighs> How about you, man? You wanna read my riddle now? Read the riddle. Read the riddle. I'm gonna read the riddle. Too little too late, brother, because all of a sudden that candlestick beside you snarls and pseudopods start coming towards you. Now roll initiative. These things are awful. Damn right. It's what you all deserve. Hear me, Dungeon Masters of the future. Behold my gift to you when ungrateful players don't appreciate you missing your kid's recital. Who is he talking to? I give you the Wiener Biden Pseudomillion. I still think David called a mimic. Ain't nobody care about Dave, man. Seth. Yeah? He zoned out on us there, brother. Yeah, sorry about that. That was really weird. But anyway, where were we? Mike was opening up the chest while Todd and I were looting all the stuff at the wall. Oh yeah, so Mike, as you kneel before the chest, the lid suddenly curls back to reveal these long teeth and a gooey tongue comes lashing out at you. Aw oh, damn, a mimic! And Dweebles, as your saw blade touches that candlestick, a pseudopod, I mean a pseudopod, comes emerging out of the side. And Todd, that giant candlestick that's near you suddenly splits open to reveal this big mouth and it starts hopping towards you like that Pixar lamp. We're surrounded. We're doomed. You get what you deserve. Yes, my student. Make them suffer for their greed in my kid's recital. Yes, my master. Wait, stop. That is not what happened, brother. And I wasn't crying. Sometimes I wish I could. Okay, yeah, there was a little bit of artistic license on my part. So you're saying that the reason we should retcon the last scene and not have had a TPK is because I was possessed by a vengeful spirit? Exactly. You were in control of yourself. You're as much of a victim of this as we were. The entire history of the Mimic is tainted with spite. Dude, I don't think any of your story about its creation was even true. And while the wiener button, man, that was weird. Do you have a better story? Well, uh, no. Yeah, I'm not finding anything on the internet about it, but holy crap. Did you know that Mimics used to be able to talk? I never knew that. Then they can tell you that everything in my story was 100% true. So... Now that you know that, do you think maybe we could redo the last encounter? Huh. Okay, so I say that we... 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big ass thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews or how to's or story of the bold or why you ain't got no butthole, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, gamers, roll initiative!